Hey there, wonderful souls. Today, we're diving into a timeless truth that is repeated over and over again throughout the pages of the Bible. A truth that speaks to the heart of our faith. Repeatedly throughout the Bible, God blesses people for their unwavering faith and through their toughest times, not merely patching up their losses, but magnificently multiplying what they had before. You see, the scripture is full of stories of restoration, of brokenness, being transformed into abundance, of ashes becoming beauty. It's a divine promise that breathes hope into the very core of our existence. In Isaiah, the prophet declares God's purpose with resounding clarity to restore the fortunes of his people. Now, let that sink in. The idea that God is not just a fixer of broken things, but a restorer of fortunes is a game changer. It means that in the midst of our trials, in the depths of our trials, in the depths of our pain, God is orchestrating a symphony of restoration, making things not just right, but infinitely better. And yes, I get it. Life can throw some serious curveballs. But here's the kicker. Even in the thick of our struggles, God is at work, diligently laboring to restore us. This isn't wishful thinking. It's a divine guarantee. Isaiah's words echo through time, assuring us that the difficulties we face are not the end of our story. They're a chapter in the grand narrative of restoration that God is writing in our lives. So, my friends, buckle up for a journey through seven profound signs that reveal God's restorative power is not just a distant promise, but a present reality. Because in your life, God is composing a melody of restoration that will leave you in awe. Stick around. You won't want to miss a single note of this divine message. Let's dive into the heart of it all, shall we? Before we dive into the signs, my friends, I want you to take a moment and acknowledge something deep within you. I know there are moments when you long for the past, for the good old days when life seemed simpler, brighter, and full of joy. It's entirely human to wish for the familiar, the comfortable, and the known. Now, here's the beautiful part. God not only hears those whispers of nostalgia in your heart, but he also has something extraordinary in store for you. It's not merely about going back to where you were. It's about moving forward into a realm of abundance you've never experienced before. Consider the vivid imagery of the Valley of Dry Bones in Ezekiel 37. In the midst of what seemed desolate and lifeless, God didn't just restore, he multiplied, he breathed life into those dry bones, and they became an exceedingly great army. That's the kind of God we serve, not just a fixer, but a multiplier of blessings. In the conventional dictionary, restoration might be defined as returning something to its former state. But hold on, let's put on our biblical lenses for a moment. When God talks about restoration, it's not a mere rewind button to the good old days. Biblical restoration is a breathtaking masterpiece, a divine artistry that takes the broken and crafts something even more magnificent than before. Take Job, for instance. In the face of unimaginable loss, God didn't merely restore what Job had. He doubled it. That's the God of multiplication we serve. So, you are not merely on a journey to the past. You're on an expedition to an elevated future where God's restorative touch doesn't just mend, but multiplies. Picture this. God is about to breathe life into every area that seemed dry and lifeless in your existence. Think about your relationships. God isn't just restoring fractured bonds. He's multiplying love, understanding, and connection. In your career, it's not just a return to stability. It's an elevation to new heights of success. Your health. God is not just healing. He's bringing vitality and strength beyond measure. 
So, as we explore the signs ahead, keep this truth at the forefront. God's restoration isn't a nostalgic rewind. It's a forward thrust into a life multiplied with blessing. Get ready, because the journey ahead is not just about reclaiming what's lost. It's about stepping into a realm of abundance you never thought possible. Are you ready for the journey? Let's continue. Have you ever found yourself clinging to the remnants of the past, desperately holding on to things that have served their purpose? Well, my friends, our God is a God of new beginnings. He has a remarkable way of ushering in the new when we let go of the old. In Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19, God declares, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? It's a divine invitation to release the grip on what was and embrace the anticipation of what is to come. Consider the story of Abraham and Sarah. They had to leave their familiar surroundings and step into the unknown to receive the promise of a new beginning, a multitude of descendants as numerous as the stars. God's restorative power is about bringing you into a season where the old, the stale, and the limiting are replaced with the freshness of His promises. So, here's the sign. If you find yourself in a season of letting go, of releasing the old, take heart. God is preparing you for an influx of new blessings, new opportunities, and new levels of abundance. It's not just about making space. It's about making room for the extraordinary multiplication God has in store for you. This is your time to declare, out with the old, in with the new. God's restorative touch is not merely about salvaging the remnants of the past. It's about propelling you into a future overflowing with His goodness. Sign 2. A new you. Ever felt the yearning for a fresh start? A transformation that goes beyond the surface and penetrates the very core of your being? Well, my friends, that desire is not just a fleeting whim. It's often a divine nudge from the Creator who specializes in crafting new masterpieces out of our lives. In 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17, we're reminded, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. This isn't a mere cosmetic makeover. It's a profound metamorphosis from the inside out. God's restorative power extends beyond circumstances. It touches the essence of who you are. Consider the story of Saul's transformation into Paul. A persecutor turned preacher, a man utterly transformed by the renewing power of God. It's a testament that God doesn't just want to fix your external circumstances. He desires to mold a new you, a you that reflects His grace, strength, and boundless love. So, here's the sign. If you sense a stirring within, a longing for a new identity, embrace it. God is not just about salvaging the broken pieces. He's about crafting a masterpiece out of your life. As you navigate this journey, allow God's restorative touch to redefine your identity, purpose, and destiny. This is your time to declare, I am a new creation. God's restorative multiplication doesn't stop at external blessings. It transforms you into a vessel overflowing with His love and purpose. Sign 3. A new lease of life. Have you ever felt as though life struggles were sapping the vitality out of you, leaving you weary? Well, my friends, the beauty of God's restorative power is not just about fixing the broken. It's about breathing a new lease of life into every fiber of your being. In Ezekiel 36, verse 26, God promises, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. It's not a mere repair job. 
It's a divine heart transplant. God's restorative touch is about infusing you with a fresh perspective, a renewed energy, and an invigorated spirit. Think about the woman in Mark 5 who had been grappling with a debilitating issue of blood for 12 long years. Picture the physical and emotional exhaustion she must have endured during that time. An unrelenting struggle that left her desperate for a change. Now, what's truly remarkable about her story is not just the healing she received, but the boldness and faith that propelled her towards that healing. The narrative unfolds with vivid details. She didn't wait for Jesus to lay his hands on her. No, no, far from it. In the midst of a crowd thronging around Jesus, she pressed forward with determination, reaching out to touch the mere hem of his garment. Why the hem? It wasn't just a random choice. It was an act saturated with faith. According to Jewish tradition, the hem of a person's garment represented the essence of who they were. In touching Jesus' garment, the woman wasn't merely seeking physical healing. She was reaching for the very essence of the healer. Her action speaks volumes about the nature of God's restorative power. She didn't wait for a formal invitation or a conventional healing ceremony. Instead, her audacious faith seized the moment, recognizing that even a touch of the master's garment could usher in a restoration of life. It's a powerful lesson for us today. Sometimes, our breakthroughs aren't reserved for a grand event or a perfect set of circumstances. Like the woman with the issue of blood, we may find ourselves in the midst of life's bustling crowd, surrounded by challenges. Yet, in that very moment, our bold faith can lead us to reach out and touch the essence of the one who brings restoration. This is your time to declare... I receive a new lease of life. God's restorative touch is not limited to patching up. It's about infusing you with the abundant life that Jesus promised. As we journey through the signs of God's restorative multiplication, let's linger on a powerful image, the closing of doors to the past. Have you ever felt entangled in the echoes of yesteryears, living in the shadows of what once was? Well, my friends, the next sign of God's restorative power involves decisively closing doors that keep you tethered to a bygone era. In Revelation 3, verse 8, we find a profound promise. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. Now, here's the twist. Sometimes, that open door is inseparably linked to closing another. It's not about shutting doors out of despair. It's about making room for the unprecedented blessings that God is about to unleash. Consider the story of Noah. When the floodwaters receded, God opened a new door for him and his family, signaling the end of one era and the beginning of another. Closing the door to the ark was a symbolic act of moving forward into God's fresh promises. So, Here's the sign. If you sense a divine prompting to close certain doors in your life, perhaps doors that lead to nostalgia, regret, or unfulfilling patterns, take heed. God's restorative multiplication often involves ushering you through new doors that lead to a land of abundance. In Genesis 12, God comes to Abraham with a life-altering command. Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Imagine the weight of that directive. Leave everything you've ever known, the comfort of your country, the security of your people, the familiarity of your family. It's an invitation to step into the unknown, trusting that God's promises await on the other side, await on the other side. Now, why did God ask Abraham to make such a radical move? It wasn't punishment, and it certainly wasn't a random test of obedience. It was an act of divine multiplication. God was about to transform Abraham from a man with a promise into the father of many nations. 
Abraham's departure from the familiar wasn't just physical relocation. It was a spiritual and symbolic act of closing the doors to a limited past and opening himself to the vast expanse of God's promises. In leaving the familiar, Abraham embraced a journey that would redefine not just his legacy, but the destiny of generations to come. So, here's the revelation. When you sense a divine prompting to close doors in your life, doors that tie you to the past, to limited perspectives, or to comfort zones that hinder growth, remember Abraham. God's restorative multiplication often involves nudging you to step out, leaving the familiar for a land of abundance. This is your time to declare, I am leaving the familiar for God's abundance. God's restorative touch is not confined to the comfortable. It thrives in the expansive landscapes of faith. Let's turn our attention to the next sign, increased faith. Have you ever found yourself facing challenges that seem insurmountable, requiring a level of faith beyond the ordinary? Well, my friends, the next sign reveals that God's restorative multiplication often involves a remarkable increase in your capacity to believe. In Hebrews 11, verse 1, we are reminded that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, consider the story of the Canaanite woman found in Matthew 15, verses 21 to 28. This unnamed woman approached Jesus, desperately seeking healing for her demon, possessed daughter. Her persistence and unwavering faith are nothing short of remarkable. When Jesus initially seemed to dismiss her, she didn't retreat in discouragement. Instead, she pressed in with a plea, acknowledging Jesus as the Lord and Son of David. Jesus' response challenges her faith, saying, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. The woman's reply is a testament to the depth of her faith. She replied, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. In that moment, Jesus commends her faith, and her daughter is healed instantly. This story beautifully illustrates the concept of increased faith. The Canaanite woman's faith wasn't deterred by initial silence or apparent obstacles. She persisted, believed, and even in the face of challenging circumstances, her faith expanded. So, here's the sign. If you find yourself in a season where your faith is being tested, where circumstances challenge the depth of your belief, take heart. God's restorative multiplication often involves stretching your faith, refining it into a resilient force that can move mountain. This is your time to declare, my faith is increasing. God's restorative touch isn't just about fixing external circumstances. It's about transforming your faith into a powerful catalyst for His multiplication. Now, let's get real for a moment. Life's journey isn't always a smooth ride, right? We've all faced those moments when everything seems to be falling apart. Setbacks, detours, curveballs, you didn't see coming. It happens to the best of us. But here's the beautiful twist in the plot, my friends. Those setbacks you're facing, they're not the end of your story. They're the beginning of a remarkable transformation. You know that verse in Romans 8, verse 28, that talks about all things working together for good, that talks about all things working together for good. Yeah, setbacks included. Let's take a page from Bezalel Playbook. In the midst of the grand narrative of the Israelites building the tabernacle in the wilderness, Bezalel's journey stands out as a testament to setbacks evolving into catalysts. Picture this. Bezalel was tasked with the work of crafting the tabernacle and its furnishings. Sounds exciting, right? Well, here's the twist. He wasn't handed a step. But step manual or an A key, like set of instructions, 
Instead, God's Spirit filled him with wisdom, understanding, and skill for all kinds of craftsmanship. But hold on, let's rewind a bit. Before Bezalel became the master craftsman of the tabernacle, he, like Joseph, faced his fair share of setbacks. The Israelites were in the wilderness, dealing with the aftermath of the golden calf incident, a moment of significant setback and spiritual turbulence. Now, here's where Bezalel enters the scene. In Exodus 31, we learn that God chose him, filled him with his spirit, and equipped him with the skills needed for the task at hand. What seemed like a detour or a setback in the grand narrative of the Israelites was, in fact, the very ingredient that prepared Bezalel for a significant role in building God's dwelling place. So, here's the takeaway. If you feel like your story is a bit off, script, if setbacks have left you wondering how it all fits together, remember Bezalel. Your setbacks could be the very catalyst that equip you for an extraordinary purpose. This is your time to say, I might be facing setbacks, but they're setting the stage for something remarkable. God's restorative multiplication is at work, turning your setbacks into the very catalyst that propel you into a purposeful and impactful journey. Now, before we wrap up, I want to invite you to a moment of heartfelt prayer. If any of these signs resonate with you, if you find yourself in need of God's restorative touch, let's come together in prayer. Whether you're facing setbacks, longing for a new beginning, or seeking increased faith, God is here, ready to meet you where you are. So, let's bow our heads and open our hearts for a powerful and transformative moment in the presence of the Almighty. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with gratitude for your promise of restoration and multiplication. In the midst of our challenges, setbacks, and moments of uncertainty, we recognize that your hand is at work orchestrating a symphony of blessings in our lives. Lord, for those who are facing closed doors, May they find the courage to trust that you are leading them to a land of abundance. For those longing for a new beginning, like Abraham and Bezalel, may they step into a season where old things pass away and new things begin to flourish. We lift up those who are yearning for increased faith, just like the Canaanite woman and others who press through doubts and obstacles. Increase our faith, O Lord and help us trust in your promises even when the path seems unclear. And for anyone feeling the weight of setbacks, may they be encouraged by the stories of Joseph and Bezalel, realizing that setbacks are not the end, but rather the beginning of a greater purpose. Lord, we surrender our hearts, our dreams, and our struggles into your loving hands. Pour out your restorative touch upon each person engaging with this message. May they experience your peace, your guidance, and the tangible sense of your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining in that moment of prayer. Remember, you are not alone on this journey. God sees your heart knows your struggles, and is actively working in the midst of it all. The seeds of faith, trust, and hope you've planted in this moment will not go unnoticed. As we continue this journey together, hold on to the assurance that God's restorative multiplication is at work in your life. Embrace each sign we've explored, knowing that your story is intricately woven into the divine symphony of God's love, grace, and purpose. You have a unique part to play in this beautiful composition, and the setbacks you face are stepping stones toward a glorious future. Keep your heart open to the signs around you, for God's blessings often unfold in unexpected ways. In times of doubt, remember 
the power of the prayers you've lifted and trust that God is faithful. You are cherished, valued, and destined for a life that reflects His goodness. Stay tuned for the unfolding of God's multiplication in your life. You're not just a spectator. You're an integral part of this divine masterpiece. Keep the faith and may the peace of God be with you. As we come to the end of our time together, I want to leave you with a simple invitation. If you believe that God is at work, restoring, and multiplying in your life, type Amen in the comments. Your affirmation is a declaration of faith, a virtual, so be it, to the promises God has for you. And hey, your journey is our journey. We're a community bound by faith, hope, and the pursuit of God's goodness. If there's a specific prayer request on your heart, share it in the comments. Let's join hands in prayer, supporting and uplifting one another. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on future moments of inspiration and encouragement. Together, we're on this journey of faith, and I look forward to connecting with you in the next video. May God's restorative touch continue to unfold in your life. Until next time, blessings and peace to you.